widest cultivated species of the genus Allium. So other species in that genus, you have the leeks, garlics, chives, uh, let's see, scallions, shallots, a range of them. But onion is the wide, widest cultivated species. And in Jamaica, we consume about over 10 million kg of onion. And that would basically work out to about over 22,000 million pounds of onions yearly, right? And doing the maths, you doing the maths, and based on our program, you'll see that we need over 490 acres of onion to be cultivated this year, right? So a lot of work needs to be done because we're basically undersupplying our markets. So let's go into the importance of proper land preparation. So one main thing, improve soil texture. So for farmers who have heavily clay soil, land preparation is key for you and for others, but very key for you. Uh, create a balance in terms of water to air ratio. And this is especially, again, important for heavy clay soils. Because with the extensive rain that we're having, we realize a lot of the air spaces within your soils have been locked up by that added moisture. So land preparation is ideal for the farmer with a heavy soil type. And for sandy loam, you still need to incorporate your manure. So land preparation is still a key factor. And next thing, recycling the nutrients, weed control, and pest and disease management. Because with less weeds, less host for the pests, and less problem for you, the farmer. And an important note, as I've told many farmers, land preparation for onion needs to be done at least two to three months prior to planting. And believe you me, with a proper land preparation, you will observe a difference in your crop. So after we have basically completed your plowing operation, your harrowing, uh, possibly a bed shaping, you need to control those weeds that are coming up. And you have different techniques. And one of the main ones we see is a steel bed technique. So let us basically quickly discuss that. So the steel bed technique can be both chemical or mechanical. So, do, so remember, it can be chemical or mechanical. But I'll focus mainly on the chemical aspect. So in the AdChem lineup, we have a range of systemic herbicides that can be used to control from your grasses your broadleaf weeds, your herbaceous weeds, your vines, etc. So one of the main practice in your steel bed or the approach you take in your steel bed is to spray your herbicide, preferably a systemic herbicide, control those weeds, and when, when the seeds that is in the soil have begun to sprout, you'll come again with your systemic herbicide and spray those weeds again, right? So what you're basically doing is reducing your weed bank, which is key for a good start in your onion crop care. All right. Another approach is, to you, is the use of uh, pre-emergent herbicides. And in the AgChem lineup, we have the Penzine and your Prol. Four of them with the active penimetalin. So these pre-emergent can be combined with a systemic herbicide and uh, help in your control of your post and pre-emergent weeds. And with, with many steel bed techniques, I recommend if you're using a pre-emergent, this should be done at least one month prior to sowing. Because you're including a pre-emergent, the, the pre-emergent herbicide may control your onion seeds that you plan to sow, right? For those who are doing transplant, you can do your steel bed at least two weeks before planting. And these are examples of farmers who have used the steel bed technique. So you can see Mr. Granville Francis, uh, a big fan of Glyphosmax. So what he had done basically, to use the apply the Glyphosmax twice before planting. And then after, after the application of Glyphosmax, he followed with a benzene and farmers, or viewers, let me tell you, advise you. When you're applying your pre-emergent herbicide, ensure that adequate moisture is in the soil. And 
when the applicator is doing the application, he should not walk or, or break the flame that he has applied to the soil. So those are key things. And an next farmer, Richard McKenzie in New Forest, you seen that? So you're seeing ceilings coming up with no weed growth to compete to them. And to note, onions are poor competitors in terms of for nutrients, right? So you want an excellent or a weed-free start. And here are a list of our pictures of some of the systemic herbicides that AgChem carries. So you have your Glyphos Max, which are with our surfactants. Then you have your Glyphos AG, followed by your Diron. And the inclusion of Diron is, is, is to rotate your active ingredients. A lot of time, farmers continue to use a glyphosate active yearly or throughout the year. So to rotate your herbicide is very key. And these are our contact solutions. So you have your paraquat, with active ingredient paraquat dichloride, your scorcher with an adjuvant, so paraquat dichloride with an adjuvant, and your carista. So these are contact solutions that you can use as well. And remember, do not leave out an, your adjuvant from your mixture. So be it, piss and be it either foliar application to the plant or weed control. So, the, so Akim carries a wide range of adjuvants to include Breakthrough, Exit, New Flint P, and our Old Faithful Spreader Sticker. And this slide gives you a glimpse of the benzene and the pro. So these are our two pre-emergent herbicides, right? So after you have controlled your weeds, and I advise farmers begin with a clean start. As I said before, clean start. So you don't want to plant with weeds coming up in your field. As I said, you lose most of your nutrients to those competing weeds. So begin with a clean start. It doesn't make sense you're rushing the production or rush the plants, and weeds are going to be a main factor. Start with a clean land. All right. So we have control our weeds. What's the next step? Seed selection. And onions are categorized based on several factors, mainly day length. So they respond to day length. And this controls. Uh, the bulbing of your onion, right? So there are, there are three categories. So you have your short day, and this range from 12, 10 to 12 hours of daylight, and your intermediate, so you're ranging from your 12 to, or your 13 to 14 hours of daylight, and your long day onions, so you're from your 14 to 16 hours of daylight. But in the Caribbean, we focus on the short day and the intermediate because we don't have a true long day, which will be, as I said, 14 to 16 hours of daylight. And other factors would be skin color. So if you're looking for a white variety, a yellow variety, a golden variety, whatever variety your market is looking for or you are looking for, you can decide. And the tolerance, the disease. So... Tolerance to purple blotch, downy mildew, arrange them, etc. Right? So high tolerance variety are key. And for all those who are new to onion production, this shows the different development uh, stage of your onion. So firstly, you have the establishment phase. And here you see usually within 30 days. But this vary depending on your latitude, right? Or altitude. So Generally, in the Caribbean, we're seeing the establishment phase range from about 20 to 25 days, followed by a vegetative stage, followed by bulb initiation, then bulb development, and finally, maturation. So when the onion uh, is ready, you will see the neck be bent, or some person call it break neck, right? This indicates that the onion has matured. So these are the different stages you'll hear me mention throughout the presentation. All right. And since you're dealing with, or you have selected your seeds, you, you want to know the different methods. So, 
So internationally, you have three, three methods of planting. You can either select from sets, which uh, persons in Israel or North America usually use. And these are immature onions that they harvest, package them, and then send out as planting materials. But in the Caribbean, the most popular methods are seeds and transplants, right? And seeds are one of the most, will, was, is the most popular because easily to handle, less time in planting, greater density, which will result in greater yield. On the other hand, transplants are very labor intensive, so higher costs, lower planting density, and basically will result in a lower yield. So most persons prefer to go the method of using seeds. So directly sowing your seeds into your soil. And after you have chosen uh, choose a method, some key requirements for onion. So your seed bed has to be very tilled, right? So you're having a nice era for the plants that uh, actively germinate and give you a quick development. And the optimum soil temperature is usually between 15 to 25 degrees Celsius. Understand? Uh, next important requirement, pH. pH usually needs to be between 6 and 7. And a lot of times when your pH falls below 5.5, you have deficiency in magnesium and molybdenum. So having a pH around 6 or 7 is ideal for your good growth. And salinity. Onion is one of the most sensitive crops when it com comes down to salinity. It's more sensitive than your carrots, uh, your lettuce, broccoli, etc. So salinity is very key. To ensure you do adequate testing in your water in your soil to, to ensure that your sodium levels are very low. And this graph, or this chart basically points it out. As you can see, the arrow pointing to onion, and onion falls within the most sensitive range. So along with carrot, strawberry beans, onions are very sensitive to salinity. So farmers, if you know you're close to any uh, saline water or you have salt intrusion, get a check of your water, ensure that your soil or your water source is not saline. And this will basically uh, inhibit the germination of your seeds, proper germination of your seeds. Other requirements. Only requires about 350, 550 millimeters of water. And as I've told a lot of growers that adequate water is key for the development, especially the germination. So if you, if you don't have adequate water, you won't get the optimal germination you are seeking. So water, is very, or adequate water is very essential. And usually, uh, generally, farmers do daily irrigation depending on your soil type. So if you're on a heavy clay, you, you probably do irrigation every two days, while on a sandy soil, you, you may do a daily irrigation. All right. All right. Other things to consider. So irrigation should cut off 15 to 25 days before harvest. So 15 to 25 days before harvest, you cut the irrigation. And this will prevent your bulb rot. Uh, you're building up a lot of fungal diseases, uh, shortening your storage, storage ability. So cut the irrigation cycle 15 to 25 days before harvest. And you see a table below. This gives, a basic, gives, gives basic information on your different range in terms of your parts per million, right? So if your nutrients, or for example, phosphorus falls between zero to five, it says it's very deficient. While if it's greater than 15, it's sufficient. So get a soil analysis done on your different macronutrients and micronutrients that are essential for the growth of onion. And since we're on the topic of nutrients, some of the main nutrients are macronutrients that onion requires. And nitrogen is of those the key, one of the key ones. 
because this is essential for your amino acid formation, photosynthesis, your DNA building, vegetative growth, a range of different processes. And your application of nitrogen usually varies depending on your soil type, your the amount of water you're getting on the land, so be, be it rainfall or irrigation, your plant population, etc. All right. An essential nutrient is your phosphorus. And phosphorus is generally uh, stable within the soil, right? Immobile within the soil. So this nutrient can be constantly uh, reached by the plants. And in addition, a lot of times the older leaves of the onion usually send phosphorus to the bulbs. So the plant usually gets an adequate amount of phosphorus. But what, what they usually recommend is to apply, do most of your phosphorus application prior to planting. Because this is essential for root development. We're not assuming that the plant has access to the phosphorus. So we'll do application of phosphorus prior to planting. All right. And, one, and the next key element or macronutrient is potassium. And potassium is very essential in water movement across the cells, carrying the salts uh, in the energy. So the energy processes, what else? Your color, your flavor, etc. your size able. So potassium is key. And they usually recommend applying 30 to 50% of your potassium prior to planting so that the plant is able to access that potassium throughout the growing season. And onion being a, a very highly celled crop, meaning that it's made up of a lot of cells, uh, potassium is essential for this development. And what I'll do, I'll show you two graphs showing the demand for your macronutrients and your micronutrients. And as you can see on the graph, nitrogen, potassium, and calcium are way up on the, graph, on the requirements, macronutrient requirements, all right? while your sulfur, your phosphorus, and your magnesium are on the lower end, but they're still required in sufficient amount to have a great crop. And on the micronutrient aspect, you see that the magnesium, your copper, your boron, your zinc. But to note, don't apply in excess of one kg per hectare of boron, right? Because this would be very toxic to the plant. So careful with your boron and your zinc application. All right. But to not, to not keep you any longer and to give you more uh, hands-on experience with a farmer using the program, I turn you over to Roy Fartner, a farmer from Braco, Trelawney, who is currently using the program and seeing the benefits from the AgChem Nutri Onion Crop Care Guide. Morning, everyone. My name is Dale Smith, the product development agronomist for the Northwestern region which comprises the parishes of St. James, Hanover, and Trelawney. Today, we are here with farmer, Mr. Roy Fartner, and he's going to tell us a little bit about his production and himself, Mr. Fartner. Yes, uh, good morning, everyone. This is Roy Falconer, uh, farmer out of Bracco, Trelawney. I'm currently planting approximately about an acre and a quarter of onion. Uh, my friend there, Dale, is a product uh, product development, development manager. Agronomist. Uh, the gran he's, a, he's an agronomist, obviously. And uh, I wanted to make sure that I have something that was sure. So I decided to go with a crop care program this year. You know, unlike the previous years. Because I didn't want to take any chances. Uh, this is week nine. I have two sections. This is week nine and this is week eight. And uh, so far, it's been pretty well. It's been going pretty good. Uh, we've had a lot of rain. And uh, uh, the products that I'm using sort of gave me some assurances and also an insurance that I will have a successful crop. So, so far, so good. So far, so good. All right, not, not so far. Not. Um, so, how did the first come about the idea or the information of using our crop here? Where did you find the information? Well, the calendars. <laughs> yeah, the calendars. As a matter of fact, I, I, I witnessed a lady in St. Thomas, I think it was last year. She got about 34,000 pounds per acre. 
And I said that was a very, very <laughs> good yield because not, normally I don't get that sort of yield. Right, right, right. You know, so I saw that and I said, I have to get hold of you. I remember I, I kept asking you. Yeah, I kept asking you. And you finally sent it to me. And I said, there's no way I'm going to plant on it without at least having a game plan. All right, good. So what are some of the early differences you're observing now compared to your crops you did before, onion planting, to now having been using the Ag Chem program? Some of the differences you observe. Well, it helps your plants, number one. You know, uh, we start from at a very early age right. in, a, in a plant's life. And uh, compared to last year, I think I see more aggressive growth. Right, right, right. You know, uh, this is nine weeks, as I told you. Last year, nine weeks, it didn't look... They were much smaller. Yeah, they were much smaller. And we've had a lot of rain. So I am quite sure if we, if we, we didn't have the rain that we've been having over the last, what, six weeks, it would be much, much better. Right, good. Um, and apart from just our foliar program, you have also included some of our granular products, like the Elixir 1515. Yes. You can see that you've applied some of that. I, I, I applied about uh, less than a week ago. So I guess it will take probably about another week before I see the results. Huh? Yes, and we need some sunshine. And we need some sunshine, yeah. But well, considering I all factors that you will be getting so much rain, I mean, in your own estimation, how do you think the overall crop or the crop care is holding up? Yeah, man, it looks good. It looks good. You know, uh, but there's one missing ingredient, the sun. Yes. So, yes, yes. Uh, which we have no control over. <laughs> but if uh, we're blessed to have sun over the next couple of weeks, I'm quite sure it'll be a dynamic crop. And you, were, you were speaking to me earlier on that you wanted to put on a particular product. Which product was that now? Fungicide. Yes. Uh, you, oh, you're talking about uh, Sulcox. 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 Right, yeah, right. I, I use the Sulcox and I see a difference because I remember in the past years, I, didn't, I wasn't as proactive with Sulcox. <laughs> and I, I, I can remember a couple of years ago, I've had a whole field almost died off. Right, right, right. You know, because of lack of, be, lack of being proactive. So, and that is, what, that, that is what, what, and that is what's good about the program. At least you're proactive. Right, right. You sort of take care of the health of the plant before you start seeing disease. Definitely. Definitely. All farmers need to take that approach because mm -hmm. it makes no sense to try to chase. So once you are proactive, as you mentioned, stick yeah. to the program and apply Very it. important. Very, very important. Very important. Then you'll see the changes, the positive changes. Yeah. And you won't have to be chasing, trying to sell behind eight while trying to hurry up and get the product. Then, then it's too late. It'll be too late, especially <laughs> in a crop like this. Yeah, it's too especially late. in a crop like onions, where everything is based on a timely application. Right. Because we know now, based on where we are at week nine now, mm -hmm. next stage is you'll be looking for bulbing soon. Yeah, within the next few weeks. Next I would say we, we have probably about five leaves now. I would say two more leaves. You start see. I don't know if some of them start bulbing a little bit. Right. If you walk, if you walk through, we, I'm sure we'll see some that are bulbing mm -hmm. as well. Yeah, man, but I uh, need some more leaves and you see, you see a significant amount of bulb. One of the great things uh, I, I observed, notice no tip burn. Mm -hmm. Definitely. Well, well I, I, I also use your, 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 your Calmax B and I use your Fortify. What the whole program? Those are excellent, those are excellent products. So the, 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 the Calmax B pretty much prevents that from happening. Right, right. Or right. minimize it. Right, significantly. Definitely. And I never used to do that either. <laughs> so, yeah, as a matter of fact, you could tell that there's a big difference right. by using that product. Because I don't really, and uh, this sort of weather would sort of promote a lot of tip burn, and you don't really see that much. Right, right, right. right. So, it's a testament of using that product. So, the change in the crop production has everything to do, I would say, pretty much with the change in your whole nutrient application yes man. Uh, from day one you started with the ag chem program and yeah. you are still continuing it yeah. and we are now at week nine as i said yeah and you can see the start difference between yeah. what you used to do yes the condition of the crop now compared to what is now yeah so in, in, fingers crossed in spite of the, the weather in spite <laughs> of the weather so um we can only 
hope that the weather turns up. Yes. That we want more sunlight. Yeah. And if we continue the program, yeah. then I don't see why we shouldn't get the yield that you saw in the calendar. Well, and that's what we want. What we You're want. aiming for more. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> You're aiming for exactly. more. You're aiming exactly. for more. Exactly. So exactly. That's the benchmark. That's the target. But we, yeah. we're aiming for more. Exactly. Well, that's what we're doing. And we hope that it will be just as good. Just as good. <laughs> All right. There you have it. Mr. Partner telling us his success so far using the AgChem Onion program. Yeah. And we'll give you more update as to the yield when it happens. Thanks. Highly recommend it, okay? <laughs> and there you have it, viewers. Straight from the lips of farmer, rye partner. Excellent testimonial. So, although he's young into the production phase, we'll keep a track on Mr. Partner to, to show you the yield that he has garnered from the AdChem program. So, in order to understand more about onion crop care, we have to focus on the pest and disease aspect. And some of the main diseases that your onion crop will experience throughout the time is, for example, your damping off. And this usually occurs early in the crop. So uh, from your seedling stage, you have issues, you may have issues with damping off if you don't apply the required solutions. And damping off usually cause a thin, thinness of the stem of the plant and be that because onion comes up in a hook formation usually you see damping off affecting the upper portion of the plant and that portion usually touches the soil right so you have uh, a thinness of the cell and then the plant collapse but again we have a range of solution so one of the first solution is your toxin a systemic fungicide that you can apply at five to ten grams per gallon followed by carbenazine another systemic fungicide which I use at 5 to 10 ml per gallon. And finally, your Acrobat, both a systemic and contact fungicide that can be used at 15 to 20 gram per gallon. And these are excellent solutions that a farmer can use. And to note, both Acrobat and Carbendazim can be drenched or sprayed on foliarly to give you the excellent control, All right? The next will be your downy mildew. And the and quick solution for that as well, Topsin, your Mancozeb, your Solcox, and your Acrobat. And for Topsin, again, 5 to 10 gram per gallon, while your Mancozeb and Solcox, 15 to 30 gram per gallon, with, while your Acrobat is a 15 to 20 gram per gallon. And the next fungal problem that usually confuses farm, because sometimes it appears as if it strips damage. And these usually start which is you call it botrytis blight. And usually start with small white lesions with a green ring around it. Understand? So our top solution for this, your topsin, your bellis, and your mancozeb. And for the bellis, which is a systemic fungicide, you can either apply at 8 grams per gallon or 16 grams per gallon. And using the bellis at 16 grams more, gives you more than just a fungicidal control. It gives you excellence effect. And what I mean by excellence effect is greater production from your plant. So increased photosynthesis leading in the greater production from your plant. So both a fungicidal effect and a nutritional benefit. And let me give a visual of how these diseases might look. Right? So you see a damping off, a downy mildew, and your botrytis. But remember, once you follow the program, you won't have these issues. And there you have it, a visual of your products. So your topsin, your mancozeb, and your carbenazim. And to know what carbenazim is in a liquid form. Additional products, your bellis, acrobat, and your zampro. And I've said before, remember to use your adjuvants. Being that onion has a waxy leaf, once you apply your fungicide without an adjuvant, all that will happen is that the solution will run off your foliage. So you won't get any penetration, it will just flow off your foliage. So I'd advise you, use your adjuvant. So let me go through it again. Your breakthrough, your exit, your new fimpy, or your spreader sticker. This will make a whole lot difference for your production 
or Fourier fungal control. All right. So to continue, with disease out there, you also have insect pests. And some of the main ones, oh, no, it's still on fungal diseases, sorry. So other fungal diseases, the purple blotch. Solutions out there, your toxin, your bellies, your mancozeb as well, followed by your stem phyllium blight. And a lot of times, in, I see inexperienced farmers confuse the stem phyllium blight with your purple blotch. All right, for the purple blotch, you usually have a water soak lesion, but that starts out with a, a white center. And as the disease enlarging or the lesion enlarging, that white center turns dark and then to purple. Right? And then you have a yellow concentric ring around that lesion. While the stem phylum blight starts out as a water soak lesion as well, usually yellow, yellow to brown coloration, and it enlarging as well. However, the center of it, instead of turning purple, it remains black. And usually these lesions come together and cause a complete blight of your leaf. So those are different. And the solution for the stem phylum blight, your top senior bellies, your man cuts them. And one of the main things I see that always affect farmers, especially in the wet years, is your bacterial rot. And the best control for your bacterial problem is your copper-based fungicide. And one that we have is your sulcox. If a faithful sulcox will give you an excellent control. So from your start, so once you have your bulb initiation, you start apply your, your sulcox up to close about two weeks before harvest, you can apply it without any problem. All right. And here's a look at your purple blotch, your stem phyllium blight, and your bacterial rot. So let us now jump into the insect pests. So these are very crucial in your production. So one of the first ones is the ants. And for all those who do direct seeding or have had experience with doing direct seeding, you know that ants will uh, move your, your seeds. And the solutions we have, your cabaril. You can either dust it or your fertigate or drench the air with the insecticide. And next solution, your tropical insect powder, which you'd have to dust the seeds of this to get the control, followed by your diazinon and your cartrax. So either you drench with those or your fertigate, depending on how your system is set up. Our next major pest is your beet armyworm, Spedoptera. And the best or the most effective solutions we have for this is your indicarb, a contact insecticide that you use at 5 to 10 ml per gallon, followed by your mimic, to use at 5 to 10 ml per gallon, or your caratrax. And all these are contact insecticides, which will give effective control of your worms. All right, to continue, leaf miner. And this pest being small and sometimes goes unnoticed, except those, those areas of damage that you see on the foliage, uh, it, is one of the most important crop in onion production, especially when the time is hot. So the control method that we have for them, or products that we have, is your cabaril, your caprid, and your caprid is both a contact and systemic insecticide, followed by your very effective dimetoate, followed by cure. And for cure, you use at 2.5 to 5 ml per gallon. And finally, trips. I mean, this is becoming a nuisance to most farmers. So sweet pepper, tomato, onion, skeleton, trips is a major problem. And, and with trips, uh, for all those who are new, a lot of time the pests appear when the foliage is getting greater. So in your vegetative state, state where you're having more foliage, you'll find the trips, small minute insects living within the center of your foliage. And control solutions for that, your caprid, your dimetoate, uh, your definite, your cabaril, or your indicarb. And you can use them at a respective rate to get control. And I'll show you pictures of the different pests that we mentioned. So your beet armyworm, your leaf miner. You're not seeing the leaf miner here, but you're seeing the damage, right? And uh, your trips. You're seeing those small black things on the foliage? That's your trips. 
and the pictures of the insecticide. So your cap read, your cure, your indicar. And we have them in a range of SKUs. So from your 250 ml to your one liter. Now there you have it, your caratrox, your diazinon, your cabaril. And to top it off, your mimic and definite. All right. So to complete pest and disease control, we'll just quickly move on to nutrient requirements. And here you have it, uh, granular nutrition. And this is basically an international standard. So a lot of fertilization companies use this standard as a recommendation to farmers. So they usually recommend applying about 30 to 50% of your fertilizer prior to sowing. So as you can see, based on our formulation, I included our elixir 151515 15, 15 sulfur. So you're using about 30, 340 pounds to the acre mixed with your moon ammonium phosphate and to also include your 15535 which you can get from Akim in your Abaddon farm. And then to complete that, you have your calcium nitrate. And these fertilizers can be mixed at the rate recommended and incorporated into your bed. But to note, farmers, I'm not saying that you should apply the fertilizer onto the bed and leave it at the surface. Because you know water, rain, weathering will break down your fertilizer. Too. So in order to get best use, I encourage that you manually incorporate the fertilizers into the soil. And by incorporating, this will minimize the fertilizer scorching your newly germinating seeds. All right. And then now at bulb development, you see the application of a 15535, giving the bulbs a great amount of potassium, which as you can see, onion greatly needs. And if you have soluble options, or a soluble system, we have the soluble options as well. So starting out at establishment, your solid grow, 12488, giving high phosphorus, so quick root development and quick growth. And in our new line of solubles, we have the agasol. And the first product of that line, the 202020, which you add at your vegetative growth to give you, as I said, vegetative growth, quick leaf development, giving the plant a quick start or building a factory for the plant. And followed by your 91836. And this fertilizer is complemented by magnesium and trace element, which is crucial for the development of your onion. And to top it off, you have your Agasol 10540, high potassium product. So we're looking for greater size bulbs. Uh, we're looking for higher quality. 10540 is the product to, to give you that result that you're seeking. And being that the, the, the crop is in great need of calcium, we have our calcium nitrate. Now you can apply that, your vegetative growth, which you usually encounter your tick burn, uh, followed by a bulb initiation stage, which as I said, the crop is highly uh, structured but with cells, and then uh, your bulb development. So these, so these are quick examples of how you can set your program. So it may not be the rule of thumb for every farmer, but these are guidelines that you can use. And to branch now into our foliar nutritional line that we have worked with over the years and developed a standard. So I've shortened the program. And if you want to see the full length of the program, you can go on YouTube and click on the Adchem Crop Care Training, and you can see the full weekly program. But I've basically comprised it into this table. And what you're looking at, one of the first products you have here is your Omex Bio 20. And don't, don't see this product as only a 2020 solution. This product is a biostimulant with 28% seaweed extract. I'm talking about kelp. I mean, this seaweed encourage great root development. So unlike the other 2020s, that's generally scorch your root system. This would encourage greater rooting greater foliage development, uh, increased resistance to disease, and a good start. So we have that for week four, six, and eight, followed by your uh, Omex Fortify. And Fortify, pro uh, product composed of phosphate and potassium. And in the phosphate aspect, you have your uh, 
in the phosphorus aspect, you have your phosphate and your phosphite. And the phosphate will help with your movements and nutrients, while the phosphite will build the immunity of the plant. And what I mean by building immunity, the phosphite will bind to your fungicides and carry them around fast through the plant, giving you good results. All right, and let, let's flow through a bit quicker. So your Calmax B, calcium source with your boron, magnesium, etc. Solid grow, as I had mentioned earlier, high phosphorus fertilizer, followed by your Nutrileaf 2020 option with micronutrients and your Nutrient Express. And you hear the word express, 15 minutes of spraying on this product, it begins to work within the plant. So you're getting your macronutrients and your micronutrient source. And as you can see again, high in phosphorus and potassium. And to complement those, you have your ZMC Express, your zinc, magnesium, and calcium solution, followed by your sugar express. And I'd advise most or all onion farmers, secure a sugar express, because this product will give you the high source of potassium that you need. So giving you greater bulb size, a quicker development, increase in your shelf life, greater quality, pungency, color, etc. And to top that off, our biostimulants, cytokine and green stim. And cytokine encourage greater root development, greater foliage development, cell elongation. So when you use this product, you are encouraging, are expanding the size of your bulb, while your green stim is your stress reliever. And because we know onions are grown in different conditions, so for regions like St. Thomas, where it's hotter, the green stem will ease that stress. For wetter areas over the west, green stem will ease that stress. So any adverse condition the plant will, is going through, green stem will ease those stress and contribute to a better yield. And let me give you a visual of the products that I had mentioned before. So your Omex Bio 20, your Fortify Solid Grow, and here you go with Calmax B, green stem, etc. Nutrient Express, Sugar Express, ZMC Express. All right. And here is some of the farmers who have reaped success. I mean, the page couldn't hold all of them. So you have farmers in Manchester, gentleman over there with his great yield in the blue. And then this young lady at the bottom from Clarendon. So there, there's a range of success from this program. Farmers have got you know, upwards of over 36,000 pounds to the acre. And we have gotten cases where farmers have gotten over 50,000 pounds to the acre. So the yield that we mentioned, we know it's possible. So once you use the Ag Chem program, we know that you can be another Ag Chem diamond as well. But I've said a lot in terms of crop care, but how does this work out into money value? Let me quickly go through the cost-benefit analysis. So as you can see, after taking out your land preparation costs, your irrigation costs, your fertilizer costs, your pesticide costs, you're looking at about 250,000 Jamaican dollars for, to cultivate an acre of onion. Understand that? And I did not include the cost to set up your irrigation because that is basically a uh, capital cost which you would work out over the time of your various crops. So, you're looking at an initial cost of 250,000, all right? All right. And the marketable yield that we had in mind, or we have in mind, is the 45,000 pounds per acre. And as you can note, I had basically decreased that for persons in, on the hillside, because these persons usually face a lot of adverse conditions, so I decreased that for them. But person on the flat, we're focusing on the 45,000 pounds per acre. All right. So after that calculation, we're seeing that and, and with a market price of $70 per pound, we're seeing the farmers coming out at $3.1 million gross, all right? 3.15, all right? So to minus or 250,000, you would end up with 2.9 million. And farmers, our viewers, that is not over-exaggerated. That is what farmers have got in the past, is getting and will get. And, and this can be greatly more than what you see. So I'd encourage you to use the AgChem program and keep this figure in your mind. So keep two figures in your mind, your 45,000 pounds 
and you're 2.9 million. I don't know which investment solution can turn that within three to four months. So consider using your AdCamp program. And if you want assistance, you can check the various reps. So in your Northwest region, you have Dale Smith, and earlier you heard from Dale Smith, followed by Sion Spence in the Southeast region. And then now you have Mr. Dane Parker in the Central area. And yours truly, John I. Johnson in the Southeast region. And then in the Northeast region, you have Mr. Dennis Lecky. Right? And upcoming events, we have our sweet potato training. And in this training, we'll be focusing on our Agchem dip. Also, in addition, our weed control and weaver control. On, on Tuesday, December, on Tuesday, December the 1st, right, at 1, 1 p.m. And your presenter will be Sian Spence, product development agronomist for the Southwest region. And at this time, we'll basically hear any questions that the farmers might have or viewers might have. All right. Okay, from YouTube, Aiden B. Penzine kill down to the root or it just burn off the top like paraquat? All right. Good question. Uh, penzine is a pre emergent herbicide. And what it does, it basically inhibits germination. So it stops germination. So these, these herbicides herbicide is targeted at your weed seed. So when they have begun to germinate, the layer of penzine in the soil would inhibit germination, causing the seed to die back. Understand? So it's not a, really a contact herbicide, it's a pre emergent herbicide. You may experience post emergent control if the plant has about two dicotyledons, right? You may get post emergent control, but this, this herbicide is designed as a pre emergent. At what point in the onion crop cycle do we start using or applying the granular fertilizer? All right. Granular fertilizers can be applied either prior to planting or, or I'd say two weeks before the plant enters the stage. Usually prior to planting, if you are experienced or you consult a rep, they can gauge you on the volume to use prior. But if you're inexperienced, I can say do it two to three weeks before the stage, the developmental stage you're going to enter. I heard you mention biostimulants. How important are the biostimulants to the onion crop? All right. Biostimulants will make the difference. So the national yield for onion is about 18 to 20,000 pounds per acre. With the biostimulants or, or foliar fertilizers from Agchem, this will increase that current yield. So the biostimulants are essential for your plant growth, the quality of your bulbs, uh, quality of the harvest, health of the crop, the overall package. Okay, and my final questions. Does Agchem Agronomist assist farmers in following the crop care guide? Yes, definitely. And you heard it from a testimonial. We have calendars, we have pamphlets, we have our agronomists, both sales and product development agronomists, that, will, that can assist you in the field and guide you through your onion crop care. So if you have any questions, you can call a, an agronomist or check the Facebook or YouTube or WhatsApp pages and hear your concerns and we'll address them. And I'd advise viewers, check our YouTube page. So share, like, subscribe, and encourage your other farmers or or our fellow growers to get on to the Agkim program because we're looking at that 2.9 million. All right. All right, viewers. Thank you for joining us on another AgChem Live. Uh, we really appreciate your attendance and we encourage you to continue to follow us on our different trainings because we're looking on growing your yield. So let's grow with AgChem. <laughs>